Good afternoon, and thank you for joining me on another episode of Ask Sharifa Videocast. I am your host, Sharifa Hardy, and I have a wonderful show for you today. We are going to be speaking with a guest who is very interesting, has a lot to share, and guess what? You don't want to miss a single moment, so I'm going to ask you to do what I always ask you to do, and that is to go ahead and share this show. That's right, share the show, go to your neighbors, call your mom, tell your grandma, Ask Sharifa Videocast is live because friends don't let friends miss out on Ask Sharifa Videocast, especially, especially, especially when we have such an amazing guest for you today. We're going to speak to Miss Nikki Lynn, and she's going to tell us a little bit about who she is and what she does. Good morning, Nikki. How are you? Good I'm afternoon, doing, rather. <laughs> no worries. I'm doing well. How are you? And thank you for having me on. This is, this is truly a, an honor. You are so welcome. Sometimes life happens like that. You expect to do one thing, a door opens, and then you get somewhere else. I was excited to be able to sit down and speak with you. I was in Vegas this weekend, headed home just so I could be here and talk with you. So Nikki, tell us a little bit about your journey, who you are and what you do. Okay, so um, I'm Nikki, Nikki Lynn, and my I run a on, an online business. It is for fitness coaches. So what I do and how I got here is right now I help fitness coaches on the business side of um, their online business because I feel like once upon a time I was a per, like doing the personal training and the the fitness coaching deal. And what happened and what I realized is when I was getting my certification and when I was going through the process of, you know, trying to establish myself, no one taught me how to sell. No one taught me business. No one taught me anything like that. And so I was real, I was real stuck. So I had a job at a gym for a little while and they said, well, go out and just talk to people working out and see if you can get them for a workout. So I tried that and then I was like there, I like, it was so intimidating and I was like, I don't even know what I'm doing. So I took a step back and I moved into the sales space. So I did sales for about a decade. I learned the business side of it. And now like my whole mission is really to help people in that industry understand how business works, how selling works, how it doesn't have to be intimidating, how it can be fun to have conversations. And that's what, yeah, that's, um, that's what I do. And that's a little bit about how I got started. Why are you so passionate, Nikki? So for me, it's because two two big reasons, three big reasons, actually. Um, the first being that, like I said, when I was doing that, I liked to help people reach their health goals, but I didn't know enough about business to be able to do that properly or to be able to do that to what I felt was my fullest potential. So then I got into sales. And by getting into sales, it was so intimidating at first. Like I, I didn't care for it. I was like, what have I done? And you know, what is a quota? What is sales metrics and stuff? And then over time, it got easier as I had more mentors helping me throughout the journey. I realized how simple it was. So I wanted, for me, it was a, a way to give back. Like I wanted mm -hmm. to give back to the personal trainers into that space and kind of let them have like the realization that I had over those years and just so they can see like that it is you know a lot simpler than what they're making it and that it's just it's something they can do it's something anyone can do you know with the right strategy of training mm -hmm. now fitness personal trainers that's an industry that definitely has been hit hard by COVID-19, by the global quarantine. You know, a lot of the gyms, most of the gyms, if not all, have been closed down. You would go to the gym, work with your personal trainer, get fit. Now, what I've seen over the past few months is personal trainers coming up with virtual ways to train people, whether it's through Zoom or maybe it's, I don't know, Skype or different ways. Have you been forced to pivot your business and your consulting when you're working as a result of COVID? Yes and no. Um, a little bit just be, a little bit because I did have some people who only wanted to do in-person training. They didn't really want to do the virtual. Um, and so for them or for me to teach them, it was a little bit of a learning curve. But overall, there hasn't been much of a pivot because my main focus is the ones who do want to go online and kind of get out of that gym nine to five style and want to do that laptop lifestyle where they can just, you know, record their workout, post it and, you know, send it to their clients that way or do one-on-one -on -one Zooms where they can form correct right there on camera the way you and I are right now. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, because I've spoken with different personal trainers and many I found have enjoyed the Zoom aspect more than anything else. And I think one of the primary reasons is because they're able to see more clients. Right. And that's what um, that's one of the things that I was talking about with one of my clients is I was like, you do have an upper hand because if you let's say you're going to do like a, um, a boot camp, they usually mm -hmm. recommend 20 to 30 people. Well, if you get on Zoom, you can have, I think, up to 100 people. I said, mm -hmm. so you can do a hundred people for this boot camp. I said, you can sit there and you can do one on one. You can drip feed the videos and let them do it themselves. And if they're comfortable, they can record it, send it back to you, and you can correct them. I said, so really, it gives you a whole wider world you can connect as opposed to just your little community. Like mm -hmm. now, the whole world is your community because everyone's online. Mm -hmm. And it's new for this industry mm -hmm. to do it via Zoom. But one of the responses that I received from people is that their clients really enjoyed it. And one of the main reasons is as we get gain weight, we don't want to go out. We don't want to go right. to the gym. We don't want to have to struggle to do that one squat where we see this, you know, fit guy, do, you know, lifting <laughs> weights and laughing like, who's the fat girl in the gym? You no, know, exactly. I, you know, so me personally, I took time off and then the gyms opened up temporarily. I went back and I said, oh my goodness, I'm out of shape. What happened? <laughs> so then I didn't want to oh, be out there. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I don't have any stamina. I'm going back home. <laughs> yes, yes. So it has been nice doing it virtually. I have a fitness coach myself. Um, you know, so I, I believe fitness coaches should have fitness coaches, business coaches should have business coaches. I have one of each and yeah, I love it. But yeah, I, once I got to that gym, I felt what so many people feel. I was like, I don't want to, I don't want no one to look at me huffing and puffing. <laughs> <laughs> I know I don't. I'm one of those people. I go to the gym for a month. And then I'm like, mm, I'm over it. And then I'm looking for that coach that is more like a drill sergeant. You know, I don't yeah. even want a scheduled appointment. I want them to call me and be like, you know, you're supposed to be working out right exactly. now. <laughs> every day, do some kind of workout. But why the business aspect? I know I understand the passion about fitness and helping people, but why did you decide to make a business? So after doing sales for about a decade, and I did all different kinds of sales. I did in the store, I did business to business, I did selling personal training, all kinds of stuff. Um, I So I have, I have an eight month old son, actually, I realized I forgot to mention that. So I have an eight month old son. So when I went on maternity leave last year, I kind of had this moment where I was like, I don't want to sit in corporate and be gone selling for someone else for, you know, eight to 10 hours a day and miss out on my child. So then I started thinking and I started really like backtracking, you know, and I'm like, okay, well, selling is one of my skills. And I studied a little bit of business in college. So I understand that aspect of it. And then I was like, who, where did I have the most fun and who can I help? And in thinking about that, I took myself back to my gym days and trying to sell personal training packages. And I just remember how hard it was or how hard it felt and how challenging it felt and just how you know defeated I felt most of the days because it was hard to get a client to say yes. It was hard to walk up to someone mid-workout and offer like a form correction or try to interrupt them and bring them to come listen to me. And so in thinking back to that, that's when I realized there's a huge opportunity that I feel is missing there. And I wanted to be that person to come in and fill that space and, you know, help, help others, help others, help others, essentially, because in helping someone understand the business, they can create so many more clients out of knowing the business. And now they've gone from helping two people in fitness to helping five people in fitness. The second part of that is my fitness is somewhat up and down. So kind of that imposter syndrome comes up. If I try to do like the personal training side, I'm like, there's no way. But when I do the business side, I'm like, now this I got, this I can do. Yes. I mean, I, I, I love this. And the imposter theory it, or syndrome is like one of my favorite topics. I always ask the guests mm -hmm. on the show is because I feel like no matter what level we get to, there's still something in us that feels like, I don't know, who am I? Who am I? You know, I deal with that all the time. Like, who am I to, to be a talk show host, to ask these questions or tell people what to do, right. or even a business consultant. But at some point you have to stand in your power and do, you know, what you came to this earth to do. However, I feel that the industry is very sexist. You know, a, a person to me, if they're looking for a personal trainer, they tend to want a male, you know, mm -hmm. they want someone who is real fit, you know, yoked up, yeah. muscles everywhere. <laughs> and we like, yeah. oh, okay, he has muscles. So I know he knows what he's doing. Do you feel that people kind of stereotype in that way? 
I agree with that. And that's one of the things that I'm trying to break, break the mold on. So like my number one ideal client, but I don't discriminate. My main ideal client is like moms who want to start a fitness coaching business and want to be able to balance family life with business. And, but I found I get a lot more of, um, a lot more inquiries from the guys who are looking to start a business. So, you know, I don't discriminate against them, but there is, when I talk to people, you know, and do some market research, that's kind of what they're looking for is like, oh, well, I want someone who looks the part because I know they can get me there. And for me to explain to some of my clients, when they start to feel that imposter syndrome is letting them know, like, but knowledge is power. So Mm -hmm. even if you're not, exactly where your body where you think you should be like you still have a journey you still have come from a to b like you can still talk about your transformation and part of your message is that you're still in that transformation and you can help someone go along with it but yeah i do agree with that that there is a lot you know a majority or a lot of people are like oh i you know i want a big yoked up dude because he's done it <laughs> it's like no you don't need that <laughs> nothing against them. They put in dedication, but you don't need, you know, you don't need to look like that to be a fitness coach. Um, you just need to know your stuff and to know, and to be willing to help somebody like that's really what it comes down to. Yes. I'll take that. Maybe I'll find a good female fitness coach, but I am definitely sexist. I always laugh and I always <laughs> tell people in case of a fire and I'm on like the third floor, do not send up a woman. I don't care how big I she know. is. I'm like, no, go back down. Send me <laughs> up a man because yep. I want him to carry me. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, I, I, I don't want a woman to come save me. I don't know. Maybe I'll change my ways after all the women firefighters write to me and try to take Ash Sharifa off the air. But <laughs> I just like, it's something about a strong strapping man, you know, yeah. fitness that you just like, oh, okay. Yes. Cause he gives those orders. You got to do 50 squats and he's barking. And it's like, that, that's what motivates me. Sometimes yeah. I think women, we're so nurturing. Like we want to understand why we're not doing the squats. It's like, right. nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. And yeah, I mean, the beauty is like pick and choose. Cause some people do need that, that drill sergeant style, I do. like drop and give me 50 smack the cupcake out of your hand, whatever it may be. <laughs> and others are like, please go easy on me. Like, this is my first time. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm right in the middle. So I, I, I do better with the drill sergeant type just mm-hmm. because it holds me accountable. Like, you know, when it's like a woman coach, I can be like, oh, well you get it. Like I'm tired. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. You know, you could tell them about your stories and your day. I'm not feeling the mood today. I'm not exactly. feeling you know, this workout and we kind of go with the feeling and the warm and and fuzzy kind of thing. But I love the business aspect. I'm always interested in, you know, entrepreneurs and when they start out, when you decided to start your business, what was the response to the people around you? Because again, I'm being um, sexist. Too often we tell women, okay, no, you can't be a business owner. You can't be the Mm -hmm. CEO, the founder of your own company, you know, go in the kitchen or, you know, go take care of the kids. What was the response from people around you? Um, It wasn't as supportive as I had hoped it would be, if I'm being honest. Yeah, it was not. Um, So I come from sales corporate and I was the only girl on my team. I was on a team of men who all sold what I sold. And then I went out on maternity leave and, you know, I told my partner, I said, Hey, like, I don't really want to go back to corporate. I kind of want to, I got this business idea. I want to run with it. And he was like, are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I said, no, <laughs> he was really, and I said, yes. And so it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't very supportive in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, and his idea, he's like, well, you know, the market is saturated. How do you know you're going to make money? How do you know that you can even do this? And I said, well, I don't, but you know, I, I won't know until I try and corporate's not going anywhere. Um, and then, yeah, there was the other aspect of it. Like, well, how do you know you can teach people how to sell? Like, you know, you're on a team of men, like, and I'm like, exactly that right there should prove the point. Like I made the cut with all these guys, you know? So I, you know, so I know, uh, I know what I'm doing well enough to make that cut. Why not make this cut? But yeah, in the beginning, it wasn't, it wasn't the support that I had hoped for. Um, And it took some time to get there. And we're still, I've, I've been in business for about a year now, and we're still kind of in that process. It's a give and take, you know, some days it's very positive and like, oh, you're doing great. Other days it's like, okay, what are you doing? (laughs) Yes. Yeah, it's hard. You know, I tell people, I love to share my story because I went through everything I went through, not for me, but for someone else. And I've been divorced twice. So 
one of the most difficult aspects on a relationship or a marriage is being an entrepreneur. Because to me, I always feel like entrepreneurs are like nomads. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. they go, I always tell people, I go where spirit says go. I don't have a guaranteed paycheck. I don't always know what my income is the next right. day. And so that's to me like a, you know, like who you are, right? And it's also, it can be difficult for a mate or a spouse to understand because they're like, okay, but the rent is due on the first. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like we got to pay the third though. We, yeah, we yeah. all like- this other stuff <laughs> doesn't matter. But there are ways I think that makes it better. You know what I mean? Yeah. One of the main reasons, the one of the main ways that I always tell people is simply this, treat your business like a job, treat yes. it like a job, work on it a minimum of 40 hours a week. You know, so often entrepreneurs can be dreamers and we lay on the couch or in the bed and we dream about the mm-hmm. business we want to work on and people watching us are like, okay, I haven't seen you do Yeah, anything. exactly. You know, so and that, I always I, tell people and I that. struggled with that in the beginning. You know, I'd be like, "Oh, well, I'll take this day off, this day off," and mm-hmm. then I realized, like, this was in the way beginning. Then I realized, like, there was no structure, and then it's, mm-hmm. and then he's like, "Okay, well, you don't have an hourly pay. Like, what are you doing? You know, come on." Right. And so I was like, "Oh, you're right." So I had to really like schedule out my time and do my time blocks, but then also have an open conversation with him because when mm-hmm. I told him about that too, he's like, "Well, you're saying you don't want to go to work to be away from you know." our son he said but you want to be on the computer which is still going to put you away so I was like so we had to find a balance and it took some time but we're we've gotten there but scheduling I had to do a lot of mindset work around scheduling and discipline just for myself to be able to sit there and map it out and you know with an infant who's now eight months old but he was a newborn when it started like you know I was already around the clock Mm -hmm. Yes. So I think scheduling is wonderful, but do I will always recommend do it at 40 hours. And the reason I say that is because it's a job. You will go work for someone else for 40 hours. Give yourself at least 40 hours. But again, if you have a set time, then you know when you're off. I do that even now to this day. Mm-hmm. And I've been working home, working for myself for years, but I will look and say, okay, you came to work at 730, you know, eight hours later, you're off. But also as entrepreneurs, what we tend to do is make our business, our entire world. You know, we don't stop to go have dinner. We don't, we, right. we say, I gotta work. I gotta work. I, I gotta work. And then we, what happens is we get so tired. And so, you know, it, it, everything just blends into one. So I would just recommend you go to your job and then you get off work, do the same thing with your business. I set boundaries with my emails. If people e- if send me an email and they call me like hours later, it's like, they say, Sharifa, I never heard back from you. I emailed you. I'm like, yes, please allow at least 24 hours for a response right. time, you know? Exactly. But setting those schedules and those boundaries helps a lot with mental um, help. Yes. No, I, I a hundred percent agree with that too. Um, you know, and especially not, not being like, so notification driven, you know, that mm-hmm. was another thing I struggled with. It'd be nine o'clock and email would come through and I'd be like, Oh, I have to respond right now. I got to get back to this person right now. Like, what if I miss out? And then in doing a lot of work, I realized I said, that's not a healthy place to come from in business. You know, you should never be thinking like that. I'm going to miss out or I'm going to miss something. You know, it's always going to be there. What's meant to be is always going to be right in front of you. It'll be there in the morning during business hours. Like there's no reason for me to take time away from my family and my relationships late at night to handle the business. So that, yeah, that was another huge aspect of the balance that I had to learn. Um, it was, yeah, it was, it was challenging. It's still challenging. I still see it. And I'm, you know, have to tell myself, Nikki, stop pause you can respond tomorrow 8 a.m like <laughs> yes but but that you you'll find you enjoy your life that much mm-hmm. better you can have a life you can sit down and play with the baby you can have date night with your husband and just I don't care what time it is like if you want to work 11 to 7 or you know I know you're in between with the baby but I always recommend having a set off time tell your spouse let your friends know I'm at work just because I work for myself doesn't mean I'm not at work, but I'll be right. off at six. I, I just, all, my friends, like, Sharifa, you, like, I tell them, <laughs> I'll call you when I get off at six. Uh-huh. So they're like, you're at home, but I'm at work. But I'm working, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you have to do those things. I want to talk a little bit about your criteria. If someone wants to come and work with you, what are, what are some of the criteria that you have? So some of the things that um, that I do, if someone wanted to work with me, is first we set up a consultation, just a 30 minute consultation phone call. Reason for that is I wanna make sure that we're both a good fit because if we're not both aligned, 
you know, I don't want you to make an investment in me and feel like you wasted your money. And at the same time, like if you're not fully committed, I don't want to invest in you. And then we end up chasing each other around and we're just wasting time at that point. So that's the number one. And the biggest thing for me is like, let's talk for at least half an hour, figure out what your goals are, make sure that I'm actually the person to help you with that and then go from there. Um, that's my biggest criteria. People to reach out who want to work with me, reach out to me. Um, Instagram, it's at Nikki Lynn Creates. I accept DMs all the time. My email is Nikki at Nikki Lynn Creates. My website um, is, it's under construction, but there'll be a piece on there where you can just, you know, kind of schedule a 30 minute consultation. That's the biggest criteria or the consultation is the biggest thing. As far as like criteria and what I'm looking for, Ideally, it's people who are either in the fitness space and due to COVID how are stuck and have had to pivot and are not sure where to turn to. I help people in that aspect on how to kind of get an online business up running and sustainable so that you're not stressed about the bills and the money. Um, second type of second type of coaches that I work with are people who maybe have just received their certification. You've just completed NASM or you know one of the other ones and you're like, now what? Like, where do I take this next? Um, I also work with people like that. And then overall, just people who are stuck, just not mm -hmm. sure where, you know, what direction to turn to. They know they want to do this. They don't know how. They don't know, you know, yeah, they don't know how to get there. They maybe have this long-term goal. I've had people come up to me and they're like, I want to open a gym one day. I'm like, great, we can do that. Let's get, you know, let's get things started. Um, I've had people come up to me who are like, I just want to work, you know, from wherever I want on my laptop and be able to train people along the way online. I'm like, great, we can do that. Let's get this thing started. So those, yeah, those are the three main types of uh, fitness coaches that I work with. Stuck, starting, not sure where to pivot. Now, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Now, with those three people, if they were to work with you, what are some of the benefits you would be able to offer them? So some of the biggest benefits is really just clarity, clarity in the business, clarity on why they've chosen that path. Um, a little bit on like who their ideal client is. The biggest thing is a, one of the biggest things I see in fitness coaches and personal trainers is they think, well, I could just train anyone. I don't need a client. But mm -hmm. what that does is it makes the messaging a little bit messy because mm -hmm. then it's like, if you there's and doing this, I found like one of my clients only wants to train in CrossFit. And I said, that's perfect. Now, you know who you're targeting. He said, I want like 18 to 40 year old you know, males in CrossFit. I said, beautiful. That makes it easier to target and, you know, pinpoint your message. Um, another one of my clients only wants people who do weightlifting. I said, perfect. Mm -hmm. We can target weightlifters. Like, so that's one thing we do is figure out who are you talking to? Are you talking mm -hmm. to the mom who, you know, wants to do yoga? Are you talking to the 40 year old guy who misses his prime high school football days and just wants to get back in shape? Um, so we get, we get some clarity around that. We figure out exactly how to package and price your programs. One thing I've noticed is a lot of fitness coaches are charging less than what they should be. And is that because common. of COVID? Even before, or just in general? Okay. Just in general, yeah. They're charging way less than what they should be. Um, you know, realistically, personal trainers can charge anywhere from 60 to 90 and above um, dollars an hour for their services. And they're charging like 20 for a one on one service. And I'm like, well, let's get those prices up. You're going to work yourself to death. Right. Um, another thing we get is out of from working with me is a lot of sales clarity. So like I said, I have a 10 year sales background. I've completed different sales training courses um, and I have different certifications. So I take those 10 years and within the 12 weeks that we work together, condense it all down and you know show you just some of the real like real solid sales skills like overcoming objections finding out your clients why using it for them things like that um and then just i said clarity right yeah overall just <laughs> overall clarity and just you know um how to really run the business and then how to make it sustainable. So everything that they learn is how to repeat it. So I teach it to you once, but then you can repeat it with your next client and your next client and so on and so forth and how to rebook existing clients because of, let's say you do an eight week boot camp, like mm -hmm. most of the time you haven't fully hit your fitness goals in eight weeks. It should be a lifestyle change. And so I show them how to make their clients see it as a lifestyle change and see them as an ongoing person to be a part of their life for, you know, the next few years, the next 10 years, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I heard you correctly. So I just want to repeat um, yeah. what you said. Did you say that you worked with them for 12 weeks? 
12 weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you work with the coaches for 12 weeks. What is the process? Do you get with them once a week, once a day? Do you send them um, classwork? What's that 12, what does that 12 weeks involve? Um, right now, the 12 weeks is once a week. They have the option to do every other week and just do 12 sessions. So either okay. or. But yeah, well, I try to do it. 12 weeks is usually like a good turnaround time I found in business, that whole like 90 day thing where we mm -hmm. can really create something and get something off the ground and going. Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, but 12 weeks is something to me that's unheard of as far as coaching. And I think that's wonderful because what oh, tends you. to happen, it, it is because what, what I've seen happen in my experience is that we want to start a business. We'll go see a coach. We'll go see a consultant. We'll talk to them for an hour, maybe two. And then we say, like, I got it. I know what I'm doing. And then we just kind of jump into the pool as, ha as opposed to having someone that we can call or um, email or however your process is as we go along, because we always come up with new questions in this unforeseen territory. No, exactly. And that's a big piece of it is the accountability piece, because okay. everything is so exciting in the beginning. You know, you're like, right. I'm gonna start a business and I'm gonna make a million dollars. And right. then you get into it and you're like, well, hell, I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, it's just, there's that dreamer effect again. So yes. that's why I try to keep it for 12 weeks. So at least you have me to hold you accountable for the next 12 weeks. Um, I do check-ins by phone too with my clients or, you know, through, um, through one of the messaging apps, either Slack or Voxer. So we can communicate back and forth during business hours. Um, one thing I really like to do is when one of my clients is going on their own client call and they're like, Hey, I'm going to take someone through a workout for the first time. You know, they can give me a call and I just hype them up and let them know like, Hey, remember what we talked about? Remember this is, you know, you're trying to find out there why you're going to take them through a good workout right now but you know don't overwork them because you do want them to sign with you and just like rebuild that confidence because the sales confidence that I have it took me almost 10 years to learn and I'm working with people in 12 weeks who maybe have never sold anything in their life they just you know could be fresh out of college and got their kinesiology degree so it's important for me to continue to build that confidence in someone else because then it's going to show in their services mm-hmm Tell us a, about a few or a couple of your clients or maybe one of your clients that you're really proud of and that stands out to you. Um, one of the ones I have, so I'm proud of him because he's working, he's going to school, he's, he's working with me and he's studying to get his, um, his, his NASM certification. And the reason I'm proud of him is because he's already has so much on his plate. He's very consistent in his business. He actually took the certification once he didn't pass and he's studying to do it a second time. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's powerful because he decided that, you know, the one time wasn't enough and that he wasn't going to give up and that this is something that he wants to do. Mm -hmm. And even when we were strategizing for his boot camp, he comes to me one day and he's like, Hey, Nikki, like everything we planned can't work because I got this job. I have, you know, my job changed, changed my schedule. And so I'm like, okay, we can pivot, you know, what, let's do it this way instead. And so we changed his live class to a drip class. And I'm like, and you can still connect with people in like a Facebook group and you can give feedback if they're willing to record themselves working out, then you can form correct. And you can tell them, Hey, at this minute, you did this at this minute, you did that. And he was so like, he's just so willing to learn and so open to learning and when I told him that, like the relief on his face was amazing, but then also just the fact that he wasn't like, Hey, I can't do it. Like, that's mm -hmm. it. You know, mm -hmm. he's like, he's always willing to pivot and figure it out. Like, I'm pretty sure that guy maybe sleeps four hours a day. I don't know how he does it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm exhausted. I'm like, let me get this straight. You're in school, you're studying a certification, you're working and you're building a business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He, he probably has more than that. He probably take care of his mom or have a girlfriend. It's like exactly. all these things at one time. Wow. Exactly. So he, yeah. So he's, he's the one that sticks out to me. I'm, I'm definitely like proud of him and, and how far he's already come. We've only been working together. He's my newest one. We've only been working together for three weeks. This is coming on week four. And mm -hmm. just, I can already see the transformation and his clarity. And he said too, he's like, I feel more confident, like talking to people and reaching out to people and like, like they're starting to get me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm, he's my, the one I'm proud of. Well, that's good. What are some of the most, pr the proudest moments of your, of your business that you're proud of yourself for doing? For me, it's going to be just starting this thing from zero to, you know, not zero while mm -hmm. pregnant and taking care, you know, and then having an infant, like 
And that's something I have to take a step back on and kind of pat myself on the back for. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not good at that whole, like I'm working on it, but I'm not good at like that. This is what I'm proud of for me. Mm -hmm. And it was a few weeks ago, actually, I was thinking about it and I said, damn, like this, I I started this from nothing. And like Mm -hmm. my son's eight months and it's, you know, it's something and it's still growing and it's still becoming Mm -hmm. something. So I think for me, that's like the number one thing. The number two thing is the feedback I get from people who are always like, thank you for building my confidence in this. They, you know, because of you, I was able to, you know, reach out to people because of you, I was able to, you know, comfortably overcome my objection or get over my fear of talking to people or whatever it may be. So those are the two things I'm I'm most proud of. Wow. I mean, just the fact that you kept going, I'm proud of you for that. (laughs) Thank you. But, uh, you know, you have a wonderful smile, wonderful energy. And I'm sure people are watching the show going, oh, but look at her. It's easy for her. Were there, especially <laughs> no. being pregnant, you know, we're emotional being pregnant. Were there moments where you just said, Nikki, I don't know if I can do this. And then how did you, if that happened, how did you get past that? Um, there are definitely moments, especially since I had tried something years and years ago and it failed. So this was like the second time around with the new business model, a new name, a new everything. Um, I had my moments when, when my son was, oh heck, two weeks old, I think two or three weeks old. He was, he had bad reflux. So he was what, you know, babies already wake up all the time, but he was waking up all the time and I was exhausted. And I remember thinking like, what have I done? Like, there's no way I can run a business and take care of this baby. (laughs) Like I got two babies. And so, you know, and then, but for me, it was just looking at him and just the idea of like, well, you haven't really tried it. So keep Mm -hmm. trying and we'll see what happens. So that was the first big moment. The second one was when I gave corporate my notice, because one of the agreements I had with my partner was to stay on maternity leave as a backup, just in case, just in case. So when I said, Hey, maternity leave is up. Like, I'm gonna let them know I'm not coming back. Like that was the second biggest moment because Mm -hmm. the income wasn't where I had wanted it to be yet, Mm -hmm. but it was growing month over month. And so with that, I was like the same thing, kind of like having a little bit of a stressful month. And I was like, what have you done? Like, why did you tell them? No, like you're nuts. You know, he was right. You shouldn't have done this. Just call him up, say false alarm. I'm coming back. (laughs) So, and then, but same thing. I, I, I started look for me, I started looking into mindset and alignment and, you know, a lot of things like that. And just, you know, I'm a little spiritual, so I just do my prayers as well. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it was just really like working through that. And Mm -hmm. I found some, I found tricks to help with my mindset. And it was this whole, like, is what you're believing true? You know, are you absolutely sure that it's true? And I found that a lot of what was coming up was fear because I was about to take things to the next level and, you know, leave corporate behind and become just solely, you know, a business, small business owner slash entrepreneur. And yeah. And so the mindset piece was huge for me to at least like move past it. Yes. I have not met an entrepreneur who has not had that conversation with themselves as whether or not they should go get a job or continue Mm -hmm. being an entrepreneur. I always tell people I was laid off eight times and I would go get a job. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be an employee. Then I get laid off and I'm like, I'm never going to work for anyone (laughs) ever again. I'm going to do my own thing. And then I'll start a business and kind of like what you said, it was a different business, different brand, different name, different everything. Then I'm like, I don't know if I can do this. So I'll go get a job. And then I'm like, I'm staying here for the rest of my life. And (laughs) then I get laid off. And then I'm like, I don't, you know, so it's always these ups and downs and highs and lows and peaks and valleys. I have never met an entrepreneur who is just, you know, the entire time, absolutely sure that they can do this. And I, and I love to point that out, not because it's a negative, but I know people who are watching, having the same experience. And maybe someone watching right now, who's like, about ready to call it quits on their business. And so I always like to bring people like yourself, Nikki, who can inspire them through their obstacles and through their struggles. What would you say are some of the main things that you've learned about yourself or even about business during this process? For me, it's it's the idea that the failure and I don't even like that word, but I don't I can't think of a better one right now. But like that we learn. Failure, exactly. And the mistakes and the mishaps and the doubts, it's, it's a part of the journey Mm -hmm. and you have to embrace it as such. You don't have to embrace it as the end of the journey, but it's just a part of the journey. So, I mean, 
like hills and valleys. They go up and down, up and down, roller coasters, up and down. And that's what this journey is, is, you know, when you're coming down or it feels like you're like, like that hill you're climbing is never, you're like, where the hell is the top of this thing? <laughs> <laughs> it's, you're really right there part, close to a breakthrough and it's never going to go away. One of the coaches that I talked to, you know, she's, um, coming up, I think she's on six figures coming closer to seven figures. And so, you know, I look up to her and even she said, she's just like, look, I still go through the exact same thing. Like it's just a part of the journey. And each time, once you learn yourself and your own mindset, each time you get a little bit better at recognizing it for what it is. And I think that's where I'm at in my journey is I, when I have those doubts, I recognize like, okay, something big is coming for one. And for two, like we've been here before, we've worked through this before, we can do it again. So for anybody that's listening and is kind of going through that, that would be my biggest piece of advice is really just to embrace it as a part of the journey, but it's not the whole journey. It's just a little piece that's going to come up here and there, but that means you're right on to something big. Like some, you're going to like break through something. You're going to be like, okay, this makes sense. Like, you know, look what I did. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, and, I, and I love your message and just continue to keep going. And that's why I always tell people, look at it as a job. That's the, the best advice that I can give mm -hmm. anyone who just starting out. Because I always tell people, if you if you think that it's going to be so much fun because you don't have a boss, you don't have a commute, you're working for yourself, you can do more harm to your business because you don't have someone going, okay, why are you are at lunch for 30 minutes, you know, right. instead of taking a 15 minute break, you don't have someone to hold you accountable to say, why are you not at your desk working instead of being in the break room, having lunch with your coworkers. So whatever exactly. you do, you're pushed by your own steam. And so, yes, being an entrepreneur can be one of the most rewarding things ever. Like I love being an entrepreneur, love being a business owner, talk show host, but I do a lot of making sure I'm on the right track. I don't have, you know, Nikki's not calling me and saying, Sharifa, when are you coming to work? I'm like, no, Nikki, I'm off today. I'm sick today. I need to take this day off. You know, we have to push ourselves. And so as a business consultant, when people ask me, Sharifa, what is the number one product or service that's guaranteed to be successful, I always tell them it's the one that you're willing to do day in and day out. Because mm -hmm. no matter how much you love your business, it's, at some point it becomes a job. Everything becomes a job. I love hosting a roundtable talk show. I love hosting Ask Sharifa for videocast, but best believe there are days when I want to call it sick for work. Uh -huh. I'm like, oh, I'm not doing that show today, like, but I'm you have to. No, exactly. And to piggyback off that a little bit, I like what you said, you know, about at some point what you like becomes a job. Mm -hmm. And for me, I think that's why the last business failed because like, so I like to write, I like to write like poetry and different things like that. And so then I started thinking, well, how can I turn a, this into a business, my hobby into a business? And when I went down that path, I realized that what happened for me was I didn't like it as much as I thought I did. I liked it as a hobby on the side when I wanted to pick up and write something, but it, it wasn't this day in and day out thing for me. And that's why that failed. So to all the other people listening too, like make sure it is something that you do want to do every single day um, and not something, you know, not a hobby that you'll end up disliking due to having to do it every single day. Cause there is a difference in the two. Um, and, you know, I learned that the hard way a few years ago, but that's what led me here. Yes. So it's not a failure. We live and we learn. And I'm sure there are things that you might be utilizing now that you learned back then. You never know. So I want to just be clear. And when I'm saying it's a job, it doesn't mean that it isn't fun, you know, because I truly right. honestly believe and I live by if you do what you love, the money will come, the money will follow. But don't think that you're going to work two hours a week and then the money right. is just going <laughs> to appear. You know, that doesn't right. happen. You know, and I always tell people, if you have found a passion for something, maybe you love riding motorcycles, it doesn't matter. I still recommend taking some business courses, being able to understand accounting, understanding that this is a business. It's not just a free for all. Where we're just going to have fun and love what we're doing right. and not expect to have days when we would rather call in sick. No, exactly. I, yeah, I couldn't have said it better. I completely agree. <laughs> I'd be looking for my PTO days. I'm like, why does El Sharifa company doesn't have PTO days? No vacation. You know, Where's the vacation pay? <laughs> All of that. I, I need overtime, double time, you know, because uh -huh. I work 12, 14 hour days 
every day. So I'm missing a lot of work, <laughs> but I love what I do. I love people like yourself being able to Thank share you. your story, share your business, share with the world what you're doing. And that's what makes me feel good. So I love it. Now, Nikki, we are coming down to the last few minutes of the show. And what I love to do at the end of every show is just simply allow my guests the opportunity to speak directly to the audience, to everyone who is watching the show live, as well as everyone who is watching it from the archives, and simply let them know what you want them to take away from your appearance today. Okay. So to everyone watching, um, the biggest thing that I would like for you guys to take away today um, one, if you're an entrepreneur who is just starting in this journey or, you know, who has kind of hit the step place in this journey, just to keep pushing forward, it's going to be worth it. It's going to be rewarding. You're going to pat yourself on the back once you've gotten there. Um, and then the second piece to that is, you know, if you are a fitness coach or a personal trainer or a yoga instructor and you're either stuck or you've been like affected by COVID, my DM, my door well, not literally my door because we got a social distance, but my DMs are always open. Your virtual um, door. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Um, they're always open. So if you have any questions or, you know, if you want to connect with me, feel free to reach out. It's at Nikki Lynn Creates. And that's N-I-K-K-I-L-Y-N-N -N -N Creates. Um, I'd love to talk with you. Or, you know, if you just want to connect and be friends, be business pals, I'm open to it. Um, but I hope you enjoyed the show. And for you, thank you for having me. I had so much fun. <laughs> you are so welcome. It was a pleasure. I enjoyed it. I want to thank you for being a guest on today's episode of Ask Sharifa Videocast. And I especially want to thank everyone who tuned in to watch the show live and everyone who is watching it in the archives. If you are watching this show, please go ahead and share the show. There was so much information, little nuggets of gold that were here today, that were shared today. And you definitely want to share it with your network, your friends, and don't just share the show. Please visit our guest website. Her, her link is in the Facebook post. Check it out. Check her out. You might know someone who needs a new business opportunity and it could work out for others. Follow her on social media. Nikki Lynn, Nikki Lynn Creates, Nikki Lynn Creates .com. And if you are interested in being a guest, please visit the website at asksharifa.com. Until next time, everyone have a safe and a blessed day. Bye now.